All right, the integumentary system. So let's take a look at what questions we want to be looking at uh, before we get into some of the info. Uh, really, the focus here is going to be on uh, anatomy, physiology, and then some thermal regulation as well. So the two types of sweat glands, uh, what functions it functions as a barrier to infection. Uh, there's three layers of skin, so this question goes over the innermost, but we'll discuss each of those. And uh, what is the body's response to hyperthermia, right? And so we'll talk about hyperthermia and hypothermia as well. Okay, so before we get into this, I got a little basic intro. Uh, the integumentary system is comprised of the largest organ in the human body, which is the skin. Additionally, this system includes hair, nails, and accessory glands. The integumentary system is in constant contact with the external environment and offers protection from the body surroundings. Okay, so that the big point there was the largest organ of the human body is the skin. Okay, so we're going to be talking about the skin stuff here a little bit. Uh, the skin forms a waterproof protective barrier that prevents germs and foreign material from entering the body. The outermost layer of skin is the epidermis. The middle layer is the dermis. And the innermost layer is the hypodermis. And so that relates to one of our questions. Uh, question three there, what is the innermost layer of skin? And that's the hypodermis. Again, outermost epidermis, middle dermis, innermost hypodermis. And going over these briefly here, the epidermis functions as a barrier to infection, right? And again, remembering epidermis is the out outermost layer of skin, functions as a barrier to infection. Whoops. Question two there, what functions as a barrier to infection? You know it's the epidermis. Uh, the dermis, though, is the location of sweat glands and nerve endings. The hair follicles along with sweat glands and nerve endings, are found in the dermis. And the hypodermis, in addition to being the innermost layer of skin, uh, contains blood vessels and adipose tissue. All right, as we look at the sudoriferous glands, these are the sweat glands, and there's two types of sweat glands. So we have the eccrine glands, which are the primary sweat glands of the body, <clears throat> and we have the apocrine glands, uh, which become active after puberty and are located in the armpits, nipples, and groin. Okay, so that relates to the very first bullet point question here. What are the two types of sweat glands? So we have the eccrine glands, which are the primary sweat glands, as well as the ap apocrine glands, which become active after puberty. Uh, and then we also have sebation glands, which secrete sebum, a mixture of fats and proteins that prevents the skin and hair from drying out. Uh, and then briefly here, let's look at hair follicles, nails, and collagen. Like in combination, this usually will make up a question on your exam. Uh, hair follicles in the skin have a large dose of keratin producing cells. These cells form the hair. The pigmentation in hair comes from melanin producing cells. Nails are developed by keratin producing cells at the ends of the fingers and toes. Collagen maintains the firmness of skin. So you'd like to just be familiar with those three terms. And then let's jump into thermoregulation, right? Especially with uh, hyperthermia and hypothermia. Hyperthermia means body temperature is too spy, too high. In response, the body dilates blood, blood vessels in the dermis to increase heat loss at the skin. Okay, so everybody thinks they know hyperthermia and hy hypothermia, but there the big point for hyperthermia, it dilates blood vessels in the dermis to increase heat loss at the skin. The body also increases excretion of sudoriferous glands to cool the body through the endothermic evaporation of water. On the other hand, constriction of blood vessels, shivering, and contraction of hair follicle muscles occur during hypothermia to decrease heat loss. 
All right, so I think we had some question. What is the fourth one there? What is the body's response to hyperthermia? Right, and again, we said uh, the body dilates blood vessels in the dermis to increase heat loss of the skin. So that's a phrase you want to be familiar with. Uh, and then our last two here, shivering and, and sweat. Shivering generates heat and reduces heat loss. Increased blood flow to the skin, increased evaporative cooling, and sweating all increase heat loss. And the role of sweat is to aid in evaporative cooling. Hairs are a part of the integumentary system, and they play a role in thermal regulation by trapping air against the surface of the skin. And then we go back to our questions, right? So we've been through each of these, and now really one of the best things to do is hit the pause button and see if you can answer all four of these questions on your own.